so that we too can see what is happening in our lives, what is happening around us. Lord, help us to not be deafened by the noise of society, by the noise of fear, by the noise of anxiety. Help us, Father, to be open to your voice. Help us to quiet all the things that, in, that are attempting to invade our hearts. Draw us closer to you. Draw us closer to you. It's in your beautiful, precious, amazing name we pray these things. Amen. 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 All right. All right. I know that some of you guys are watching online, but I'm going to ask it, and I want you guys to yell it at home as well. Are you guys feeling blessed today? Yes. yes. All right, come on, a little bit louder. Are you guys feeling blessed today? Yes. Awesome. One more time. Are you guys feeling blessed today? Woo! Yes. So am I. So I'm going to let Kelly read this. I, I, you're going to I'm like using here. You know what? Here, look. We'll share it right now. How about that? Wow, well, that's exciting. Okay, we got another. <laughs> you're just so close. <laughs> we got another thank you card from the school superintendent for the SAU 36. It says, thank you for your unwavering support of SAU 36. Your thoughtfulness, kindness, and gratitude is appreciated, and you've made a difference. It is people like you that make this job so rewarding. Thank you for all you do, and Happy New Year. Best wishes, Mary and Anastasia. So I think when the superintendent says thank you, that's a big deal. Yeah. All right, so um, it was just kind of launched out there on social media earlier this week, but Kelly felt prompted with some of the things that are going on here at the local nursing home, Country Village. I know that the cases have um, increased, and then there are, um, I'm not sure what's going on. I did hear that there were some cases that were closed, but um, they need encouragement. They just, they need encouragement. So Kelly called and said, hey, what can we do to encourage you guys? What can we do to help you guys? What can we do to bless you? And um, they just said, hey, look, you know, just put some things together. So we're just, you know, Kelly mentioned, you know, like little snacks, little treats, that kind of stuff. I don't know. She just left the room. Drinks and stuff like that. Has to be prepackaged. They can't well, accept yes. anything that is handmade right now. Right. Um, it can be for, for patients. It can be for Yeah, so chapstick. Chapstick, prepackaged snacks. Snacks. Um, like fruit cups or pretzels or yeah, fruit cups, pretzels. things like that. Yep. Um, I'm saying it over again so that the stream can hear me just to be like, why is he doing that? So, <laughs> crossword yes. puzzle books. Yeah. Things like that, which is nice. Also, um, Norma brought some cards that you can write personal notes of appreciation for the staff or patients, and they're out in the foyer with some pens and hand sanitizer so that you can do that. And there's a basket out here where you can put those items. We'll be collecting until I will be dropping items off Wednesday morning. So if you need to come ding dong ditch my house with those items, 
please let me know you're on your way so I can watch for them. Um, but that would be great. We really want to take an opportunity and, and just, it's a lot, guys. It's a lot. When you have yeah. patients and staff that are sick like this, it, it takes a toll. And uh, Janet Dubedier, the activities coordinator over there, when I talked to her, um, exhaustion isn't even the word that right. I could, I, it doesn't even compare to what her voice sounded like over the phone. Right. So we can we can step in and just offer some kind of encouragement. This yeah. is the church. Let's yeah. be the church. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Thank you. I don't know if you guys heard that on the screen, but um, they just need our love and support. So drop stuff off this week. Um, be an encourager. Prepackaged snacks. Um, she said um, Norma brought some cards for you guys to fill out as well. Those of you who are watching online, if you um, can't come in for some reason, you guys can do some cards as well um, and send it their way or send it our way so we can bring it to them. Um, there are just different, many different opportunities to bless them. Just make sure that it's not, you know, baked goods that you've done at your own house. It needs to be things that are prepackaged. Um, and then crossword books. I can't remember if I mentioned that already. So just think about it. Message um, us online or uh, give us a call and ask us if you have any questions about that. You want clarity on that. Um, also, uh, for those who um, are here this morning, there's a basket at the back of the sanctuary for you to drop off your offering. Those who are following online, our online giving portal is up and working through Tithely. There's a link in the description of this video. Um, there's a link on our website as well. In every YouTube video that we put up, there's a link in the description of that video. Um, just thank you guys for your continued faithfulness. Thank you so much for your continued giving and your um, just efforts to bless the work of this church. I just want you to know that it is profound and it's working. Um, for those of you guys who have been coming to our online uh, Bible study through Google Meet, we are still doing that. We will have another three weeks. Um, if you include this Tuesday coming up, it will be three uh, starting this Tuesday. We're continuing to talk about Abram, Abraham. And um, if you are interested in, in uh, being a part of that, it's not too late to jump in. I've created um, some study guides. So if you are interested in participating um, online or here, let me know. Just give me an email address or tell me if you want me to send you stuff through Facebook so that I can get that to you guys so that you can be prepared for the study when it comes on Tuesday. Um, so that's just incredible. I know that um, my family, we're going to be working on some things just kind of a surprise here, but we're going to be working on some things, not as often as every week, but we're going to be working on some things to continue to put content online, just to engage family and to have a little bit of fun. Um, not everything has to be serious. Um, so, I mean, you guys who were able to watch, it was hugely entertaining. Um, yeah, there was some fun stuff that happened, including pickle, relish, snow cone with some lime. What's that? Lemon juice as well. So lemon juice, not lime. Lemon juice. Le lime might have been better. Anyway, so so um, anyway, we're just we're doing our best. I know that we're in a difficult time right now, and things are just a bit challenging, and we're just trying to adapt. And I think that we've been largely successful. People were able to attend our Christmas Eve uh, service, and um, through online and being present here, people are continuing to engage. We are contacting. Uh, we're connecting with people in like far-reaching places that we never thought we would be able to connect with overseas and in other countries, people in our own country at different places. It's just been beautiful to watch as God has used our online presence to minister to people we would have never been able to otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so that's just how God has um, allowed us and encouraged us to leverage what's going on right now to be encouragers. So... I'm going to be preaching uh, starting next week, and I'm not firm on the title yet, okay, but I'm going to be preaching a, a series of messages just comforting us in times where things just feel uncertain. And so I'm going to start that next week, but last week I started um, just a two-parter here called Beyond This. And the reason I titled it Beyond This is because we are going to, at some point or another, begin to realize that we have to move beyond this beyond what's going on in our life, beyond what's going on in our nation and other nations, beyond what's going on with coronavirus. And, and so like, we need to be um, intelligent. We need to practice wisdom. We need to be discerning people, um, divinely empowered by the Holy Spirit as we move forward. 
and begin to embrace the work of God and embrace where he is taking us next. Because even though, even at times when we feel stuck, even at times when we feel like we are um, just in this place where we can't break free, where we feel like we've been immobilized because of um, rulings and orders and things that we need to abide by, we need to realize that even in our own homes, we can move beyond this. And so I've got some things that I'm going to share with you this morning. But um, last week was, we talked about a promise, we talked about truth, all right? We talked about um, potential, and we talked about purpose. Essentially, um, what we were saying last week is that we need to believe in Jesus' promise, we need to le learn the truth, we need to find your purpose, you need to find your purpose, I need to find my purpose, and we need to discover potential. We need to discover potential. Now, the world isn't faring very well right now. I mean, I think like we've recalibrated in many instances, and we're beginning to um, just operate differently. We're beginning to work in the right direction. We're beginning to get accustomed to, in some ways, life as it is right now. But I think that some of us are feeling a bit overwhelmed. We're feeling a bit weary. We're feeling as though things are just so present right now. And it feels like, to, to me, okay, to me, it's like this, okay? Um, the pandemic being involved, it seems to be like a, an evolution of the things that were already going on. Like, I believe that as a nation and as a world, there were issue, issues already present. It almost feels like um, there was a little bit of a fire going on and um, coronavirus just seemed to, you know, like just throw some gasoline on it. And it just started making things worse. It created intensity, you know, with everything that's going on. Racial divide, um, you know, inequality, um, these battles between, um, you know, people and the police department um, and any emergency, um, you know, personnel, like all these different things that are going on. All these different things that are creating such an unsettled environment. And so like, you just kick in this thing, you just kick in a virus. You make everybody stay in their homes. You make everybody feel overwhelmed. You make everybody feel the pressure of it, and things just start to get more chaotic and more problematic. And so we need to ask ourselves this morning though, in the face of difficulties in the social realm, the economic realm, emotional, spiritual, so many more areas, physical as well. How do we see this? How do we see this? Remember, I'm saying in this series, beyond this. Okay, so I'm asking you, follow, track with me for just a minute. I'm asking you, what do we see in this? Like, what do we see? How do we view this? How are we recognizing this situation? Because I tell you right now, the, the, this, this event has like created a catastrophe of some kind, if you will. Again, instigating issues that were already going on. But I believe that many of us have experienced a wrecked social experience. It's been wrecked. We've been exposed to human conditions. We've been, this, this event has revealed faulty government systems. This event has brought to the forefront our nation's vulnerabilities. This event has created the setting to reveal our own hearts. And it has messed up the faulty assumptions of comfort. Like this event, this thing that's going on around us has just created so much turmoil. It's just affected everything. And so I need to ask you though, how do you view this? How do you view this? Now, here is some perspective, and I just, you know, upon reading social media posts and talking to different people, these are some of the things that I came to. Some believe pandemic messed everything up. Some believe pandemic revealed how messed up everything is, all right? Some people believe that pandemic stole what mattered to us. Some people believe that pandemic showed us what really matters. Now, if we look at the context of this, we can say for every one of these things, it did. You know, some believe the pand pandemic messed everything up, it did. Some people believe that pandemic revealed how messed up everything is, well it did. Some people believe that pandemic stole um, what mattered to us. It did. And some people believe that pandemic showed us what really mattered. It did. It did show us. 
And so there's all these different experiences. Now, there is this um, familiar phrase that, um, that's been said over and over again. And, and follow, my, follow my illustration here, okay? A lot of people have said 2020 is a dumpster fire. So, it has been a point of humor in its context, but I want to just elaborate just a minute in understanding or clarifying how we see this, okay? The good and bad of this season that we are in, the season that we are in, is not the same for everyone. And though we are in the midst of what some are calling a dumpster fire, we've got to decide what's in the fire. It's either lit with the life we love, either it's lit either the life we love on fire because we believe that everything has been trashed, or the trash that we've been carrying is finally burning because we recognize just what was going on in us because of this crisis. Like, we've got to adapt the way we see this. We've got to adapt the way we see this circumstance. And I know that this seems maybe a bit silly or immature, but the seriousness of this is that in our revelation, our understanding of this dilemma, where are we? Are we seeing it as an opportunity to recalibrate our lives and begin to move forward, moving beyond this? Or are we saying everything's halted, everything's stopped, everything's damaged, everything's ruined, we're not going anywhere, nothing good has happened? Like, those things are very much true, those things are very much real, but we have got to begin to determine what we're going to look at, what we're going to see. And I'm not telling you to, you know, like some people say, oh, well, you got to see the good in everything, or, you know, there's a silver lining. No, I'm talking about something more deep here. I'm not talking about some, you know, like surface kind of experience where you're just like, oh, well, I've got to see the good. No, no, there is a lot not good about this situation. People are dying. People are dying. There are friends of us, family members, people that we know, people that we care about that are suddenly ill and in a hospital. There is an increase of, of um, emotional instability. There's an increase of substance abuse. There is an increase of all of these different things as people have realized that the plague is something that is affecting people physically, but it's also something far more reaching. This plague has evolved us into other plagues. Plagues of, um, you know, just instigating our, our depressive disorders, just creating more pain in the areas of, of our physical ailments because we're stuck in one place, we're stuck at home, and we're unable to get out. So we've got questions. This event has made us question society, the economy, science, government, environment, doctors, medicine, family, relationships, priorities, ourselves, the church, Christianity, faith, Christ, and God. And we have got to see this year, and notice that we will recognize that this has been a year of confusion. This has been a year of chaos, catastrophe. This has been a year of crisis. This year has cost us a lot. Calamity. This year has created many, many questions. And people have either confronted the questions thrust upon them by this struggle or have run from them, have ran from them refusing to grapple with the epidemic's ability to expose our frailty. Catch what I'm saying. We have been confronted with some serious things. We have been confronted with some trouble. We have been confronted with life in ways that we never thought we were going to. We are frustrated with the government. We are frustrated with the medical system. We are frustrated with science. We are frustrated with each other. And all that this is doing is, is exposing our heart condition, our issues. You lock people up in a house together for a long period of time. I don't care how wonderful, how amazing, how perfect your family is. Things are going to get tense. All right? You're going to see too much of each other. You're going to smell too much of each other. You're going to look at each other too much, right? Those things that you were able to find, like, a, a sense of, of freedom by, by, you know, separating. I know that sounds terrible, like, oh, man, Pastor, you're horrible. You want your kids to leave the house sometimes? Absolutely. Just like they want to leave the house sometimes, right? And so, so like, this situation, this struggle is revealing our life's issues. 
It's revealing the dilemmas within us. It's revealing how frustrated we are, or what we do when we're frustrated. It can reveal how hateful we are. It can reveal how um, prejudiced we are, or judgmental we are, how proud we are. But church, listen to this. We are all sick. And by no means am I minimizing or trivializing what is happening. We are all de dealing with physical, biological, emotional, and spiritual things. Mm -hmm. Global struggle has revealed our desperate need. We are frail. We are frail. It's caused us immense grief. We better heed the warnings that this event has presented humanity with and turn to Christ. We need Jesus. We need Jesus. That's what we need. You're afraid of death? You need Jesus. You're struggling in the hospital? You need Jesus. You're scared? You need Jesus. You're angry because you don't feel like you need to be scared and the media is, you know, instigating, you know, fear and anxiety in the world, but then you need Jesus, Right? You feel like your family and friendships are being ravaged by this event. You need Jesus. You're frustrated about the political climate. You need Jesus. Right? You're frustrated about, you know, no, what's not coming through the stimulus or what is coming through the stimulus. You need Jesus. I mean, come on, like seriously. In every part of this event, and I'm just throwing things out there. I know that this is a politically... You know, just like, it is just enraging politically, and people are just getting so mad and so angry and so frustrated, and I really want you guys to understand something. We are not here building this kingdom. This is not our homeland. This is not our final spot. People are going to make differences. People are going to have differences of opinions. People are going to like this candidate and this candidate. You better stop fighting the wrong battle and start fighting a kingdom battle. You need to, because we are in trouble. And it goes far beyond. It goes far beyond all of these different things that we get so fixated on. Is the President of the United States someone that we should vote for? Yes. Is it something that we should do? Yes. Should we be involved in pol politics? Yes. But don't allow that to be your end game. Don't allow that to be your sole focal point. Don't assume that if the wrong man or woman is voted into the position, that it's all lost and everything's going to hell. I'm sorry, but just being real. Amen. Just because somebody is in office does not mean that everything's going to be problematic. All right? And just because people are in different um, positions in the government, just because people don't do things that we feel are necessary to do. Just because we are being told, like, look, you know, um, you've got to abide by this, you've got to put masks on, you've got to do this and this and this, or you've got to abide by this, and, and you're just like, oh, you know, God can move in spite of all of those things. Yeah. Forgive me, I just went somewhere. <laughs> back to the notes. Um, oh yeah, we need Jesus, come on. Um, <laughs> There is something more to this, and not because there is a this, there has always been more than this. I know that's like a lot of this, is, but follow me for just a minute. There is something more to this. There is something more than what's going on right now. There is so much more than, that, that is going on in this moment, in this experience, in these tensions that are happening in our nation, because there is a this. It's not just because there is a this. There has always been a more. There's always been something going on. There's always been a struggle. Point number two, we desperately, we are desperately alone without Jesus. Romans 5, 6, and 8 says this, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. While we were rebellious, while we were hateful, while we rejected him, while we were in rebellion, he died at just the right time. He came and died for us. Guys, we need to recognize this news. He is still king in this crisis. He is still Christ in this chaos. 
He is still the conqueror in this catastrophe, and he still is full of compassion in all the calamity. There is so much going on, but you need to recognize that though there is a dilemma, and there is a situation, and there is a struggle, that Jesus is still king. He is. So we need to move beyond this. Yes, I know 2021 came in, and we're just like, let's go, let's change, let everything be different. I want to move on from this. And it didn't change the way we anticipated or thought it did or should. We're just like, okay, I got, you guys got to realize that just because we're kind of stuck in this moment where it feels like 2020 is, you know, deciding it's going to go into overtime, you know, like, like even though we feel that, it doesn't mean that there's not something God can do right now. We will never be the same. We will never be the same. All right? Listen to this. Philippians 1, 6 in the Passion Translation says this. I pray with great faith for you because I am fully convinced. I am fully convinced that the one who began this glorious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you. He will see to it that you remain faithful and will put his finishing touches to it until the unveiling day of Christ, of our Lord Jesus Christ. The day of Christ. He's talking about eternity. He started, he's going to finish it. He's a starter, he's a finisher. You accept him into your life, you take him into your heart, you experience him, you make him Lord. You better believe that the work he started, he's going to finish. He loves you enough to find you where you are, but he loves you too much to leave you there. He just does. He cares so much. We will never be the same. Pandemic has a way of changing us. It changed us. But awakened by Christ, everything is different. Our narrative is full of life and promise. Our narrative is full of life and promise. We will never take for granted the freedoms we have due to the simplest of things. Had to do the simplest things. To run to the store for bananas. To hug our grown kids. To sit on the floor and play with our grandkids. There's somebody that our family knows of right now. One person in that home is, has, has tested positive. The other two are not sure. We're talking about a child and their parent. And they're separated in the same house. And that parent's got to wear a mask every time they get in proximity to their child. Can you imagine? Like, we've been awakened. We should have been, this should change us. We should never take for granted our freedoms. We will never take for granted the privilege of gathering with our brothers and sisters in Christ. I know that we're here right now, but the truth is, is not all of us are here. Not all of us. May we wake up and recognize because of the things that we feel have been taken from us, just how precious, how special those things are. We'll never take for granted a handshake, a hug, a kiss on the cheek. We will never take for granted what we once thought we would never lose. You guys following? You guys tracking me? We will be awakened. Now, this is important, guys. This is important. As we beyond, go beyond this, as we move beyond this, there needs to be an awakening of some kind. We will be awakened, awakened because while we once thought we were in control, we really, we, we weren't, never really, we were never really in control. We will see how fragile life is and that the author of life is the only one in control. We'll be awakened to how connected we are to one another. Not just to our families, but our, to our friends. But we are connected to people all the way to the other side of the world. Their destiny and our destiny are delicately intertwined. We will be awakened to who we really are. We will see that we can be noble and heroic even with something as simple as just stay home. We will realize that what we really value isn't the stuff in life, but it's the people in our lives. There is one, the Bible says that everything else, let me, let me preface it this, everything else will rust, everything will rot, nothing in this life will enter heaven with you. 
except for the people around you. So you better fight hard to share his truth with the people around you because you want them in heaven with you. We will be awakened to the needs of others. We're seeing this in a church as a whole. We've been asked to slow down for the sake of those who are at risk. And we've done it. We've closed businesses, canceled money-making events, delayed dream trips. We've stopped doing what might hurt our neighbors. We will awaken to finally see the needs of the at-risk among us. We will begin to see the poor, the disadvantaged, in a new way. Our consciousness will begin to change as we see the world differently, as we see things differently, as we see others differently. We'll be awakened to our limits. We will see that even though the world leaders seek to do what's necessary and best for the common good, they are limited. They're going to disappoint us. We're going to disappoint one another. They do not fully know the to do yet. And they probably never will. Yet they lead bravely as best they can. I'm telling you right now that in my own home, there has been struggle at times. It's like I've got to, I've got to encourage my kids. I've got to, I've got to help them believe and help them be confident and help them be frustrated. And they're crying in their room and they're overwhelmed and they're frustrated because they just want to be around people. They just want their friends back. They won't like to go someplace that it's not right now. Man, I'm just like, I got some advice. Here we go. And I say something, it's like, ooh, that was bad. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't mess them up later in life. <laughs> you know, like, like you just speak something. You're just like, I'm trying to be helpful. I'm sorry. You know, like, like, but seriously, seriously, we will begin to realize just how limited we are. And that's okay. I want to know how limited I am. I want to know my capacity because it's only there where I begin to rely more on God begin to seek His Holy Spirit and His divine words through me to be able to encourage my children, to be able to encourage my wife, to be able to speak to them, the courage to say things that need to be said, and the courage to shut up when I need to shut up. Right? We need to realize just how limited we are. We will be awakened to our personal and institutional gaps. For us personally, we will realize how much we need community. We will reach out and connect in ways that we have never done. And this is if we do things that are right, okay? We will reach out and connect in ways that we never have. We will build the social network we wish we had had in the first place before we arrive at this. For the church, we will also realize where the gaps are in our ways of doing church. We will see whether we have built a network or, and a community that can sustain this thing happening, that can sustain not meeting on Sundays as it was for some time. We will ask and seek answers to the question, what does it mean to be a church? And in our isolation, we will emerge with a new commitment to connection. We will be more connected. That's what we got to do. That's what we got to do. You realize that the people that frustrate us the most are people that we miss right now? <laughs> like, seriously. You know, like, oh, man, that person just, ooh, ooh. And then next thing you know, like, you realize, oh, man, even though I had said underneath my breath at times, I never want to see them again. They make me so mad. You miss them because you miss people. You miss connection. You miss love, compassion. You miss that, that, that personal interaction. And as the kids have gone back to school, as the kids, you know, have gone back to school two days a week, they're like, yay, we're back in school. They're like, don't touch each other. Don't be next to each other. Don't be close to each other. Like, put on a mask. You know, like, man, never has the time been so great for high school dances because things can't get awkward, right? Like, like, no, you can't dance together. Darn. Um, no. But like, seriously, they're going, I'm sorry, honey. They're like, they're like going to school, and it's like this dilemma, it's this serious issue where it's just like, okay, this isn't fair. This is frustrating. This is overwhelming. How do we handle this? How do we deal with this? How do we overcome this? 
struggling through this. Number four, we are going beyond this, not before this. Matthew 24, 4 through 7 seems to communicate this. Actually, it's 24, 4 through 8. I'm sorry. And the past translation says this. Jesus answered, this, at the time, at that time, deception will run rampant. So beware that you are not fooled. For many will appear on the scene claiming my authority and saying about themselves, I am God's anointed. Or they will say, I'm the Messiah. And they will lead many astray. Verse 6, you will hear of wars nearby and uh, revolutions on every side with more rumors of wars to come. Don't panic or give in to your fears. For the breaking apart of the world system is destined to happen. But it won't be the end. It will still be unfolding. Nations will go to war against each other and kingdoms against kingdom. Kingdom against kingdom. And there will be terrible earthquakes, seismic events of epic proportion, horrible epidemics, and famines in place after place. This is how the first contractions and birth pains of a new age will begin. True believers in Christ anticipate the coming of a new day, a new age that is dawning with Christ and his bride ruling the nations. What am I saying right now? Jesus is going to return and we can look forward to heaven. In the words of my own children who have so much life ahead of them, some of them have just said, man, Jesus just come back. Never thought that I would hear that from a child. But we are in struggling times. But if you look at this text, if you look at Matthew 24, 4 through 8, it looks like it's talking about our day. It's talking about wars, epidemics. It's talking about people that have come in his name claiming to be the Messiah. Right, we're living in that. It's talking about earthquakes. But it says in there, don't panic. Don't give in to your fears. This is a part of the plan. Yeah, I know. I don't like it either. This is all a part of what's going on. This is a part of the awakening. This is a part of what God is doing. This is a part of what God is moving in, in for us. This is a part of what God has to accomplish through our, um, our world and our lives and our existence. Speaking of Jesus, who would come? In Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, it says this. But forget all that. It is nothing compared to what I'm going to do. No, verse 19. For I am about to do something new. See, I've already begun. I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make pathway, a pathway through the wilderness, and I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Hey, guys, I've got news for you. This rivers and pathways, this, this rivers in the wasteland, this pathways in the wilderness, that wasn't a one-time event. See, he was creating eternal rivers. He was creating pathways that would continue. And his son Jesus, something happened, and it changed everything. It set us free. And so in that, we now have a new path to walk. We now have new streams to pull and draw water from. Water that will revive us. Water that will encourage us. Water that will bring us life again. Yes, these words from Isaiah were about the Messiah. The Messiah who came, the Messiah who died, the Messiah who resurrected. And this path in the wilderness and these streams, these rivers in the wasteland. How many of you guys feel like at times you're in a wilderness? How many of you guys feel like we are right on the precipice of wasteland? There are people in other nations that exist in a wasteland. And they're waiting for a stream to come because they're so thirsty. We are living in a world shattered by hopelessness. And Christ is saying to us this morning, look, look, there's something fresh to partake. There's something fresh to have. There's something fresh for you to experience. For you to have, for you to experience. See, we are going beyond this, not before this. Like, you know, like some people have said, I just want to, I want it to go back to what it was before this. Mm -hmm. Like, I, a lot of people say that, and the truth is, is that's, that's not, you know, I mean, like, like, that's not the most horrible thing to say. I want to, you know, I want things to be simpler. I want things to be less complicated. You know, like, sometimes I wish I could go back. I mean, sometimes not, because I would never do middle school or high school again. It was wretched, horrible, and awful. I was, like, you might be surprised by this, but I was friendless. 
and it was bad. And well, except for my one best friend. Um, sorry, Matt, if I hurt you. No, he, he was there all the time, but like, as far as like huge social circles, no. <laughs> it just didn't happen. You know, it didn't happen. I was, I, you know, like I would never want to go back to high school again, but there are times where I wish I could go back and like just get rid of all the technology, all the cell phones, all the different things that have just, and, and I know that, I know that this has been important for us because we've been able to digitally engage. Don't misunderstand me, but sometimes I feel like what was before this was less complicated times. But the truth is, is it wasn't. It wasn't. We're just facing different kind of complications today. And if, if I'm correct, and I think I am, that this event has revealed just how broken our nation is. It has revealed just how broken we are. It has revealed the vulnerabilities in our, in our uh, economic structures. It has revealed the vulnerabilities in our families, in our lives. It has revealed so much about us. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to. I want to. I want to go. I want to go someplace new. I want to go someplace different. I want to experience something beautiful and lively. I want to experience the lavish love of Christ. That's where I want to go. That's who I want to be. That's what I want to experience. That's what I want our church to experience. Right? You guys with me? We were so naive. I'm sorry. It's just real. When this stuff started happening, I was like, Psh, yeah, it's, no. It's not a big deal. Whatever. It's just going to blow over. And then here we are. Like, forgive my ignorance, Lord. Forgive my foolishness. I know that not every detail and fact, as I was sharing last week, is accurate and completely uh, correct. What I do know is there are people that have been in the hospital that have died. That's what I do know. I do know that this has not been easy for anybody. I do know that our church is different now because of it. I do know that I'm different because of it. That my life has changed, that my family's life has changed. Yeah, we get irritated with each other sometimes, but it's been worth it. We've grown a lot. We've grown a whole lot. All right? Not just in stature. My son had like several birth spurts, thank God. Um, I could use another one at some point. But anyway, not happening, no. Um, in fact, I'm probably going to shrink as one kid told me once. Yes, you are. He actually told me, he said, you know, you're short. And I said, yeah, you're shorter than me, but you're short too. And, and he said, yeah, at this rate, you're going to look like a troll by the time you're 65. Anyway. No, I said another kid. If you ever said anything like that to me, I, no. <laughs> but, but no, like, let's not go before this. Let's go beyond this. Amen. Even when we feel like we're stuck in this, there is always something God is doing. He is a beginner and he is a finisher. And just because that scripture talks about the finished work that ultimately experience, we ultimately experience in heaven, that doesn't mean that he is continuing to put the finishing touches on us every single day and every single moment and every single second. You know, buffing things away, chiseling at you, Breaking off those rough spots. Man, and it's been hard today. And some of the things that we've experienced as of late have revealed just how messed up we are. So, a few last questions. All right? A few last questions, and then I'll be done. Who are you now, and who, who will you be beyond this? Who are you now? And who will you be beyond this? That's an important question. Because we should be ever changing. Who you were was different than who you are now. Now the truth is, is some of us, the person we are now isn't so good. The person we were before was better. But we shouldn't want that more. We should actually want something more amazing than what we were before. Just because you plummeted a little bit you made a mess, created some issues, it doesn't mean that you can't bounce back. Because that's the business that Jesus is in. Who are you now? And who will you be beyond this? You guys catch what I'm throwing down? Yeah. All right. Jesus, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for truth. I thank you for peace. Lord, I ask that you would comfort and strengthen us as we go throughout this week. Lord, that these words that were shared this morning would affect us in an incredible way. 
Lord, that we would recognize that though we may feel stuck in what's going on right now, there is something that you want to do in us as we move beyond this, beyond our experience, beyond our current issues and our struggles. God, you've revealed so much to us about us and about our country and about other countries, about our planet, our globe. And you want to do something so marvelous, so wonderful, so amazing. Lord, I've heard people talk about another great awakening. Lord, I desperately yearn and long for it. Just maybe it took a horrible experience, as awful as it is, to ignite a movement. And Jesus, I pray, I extend prayers to that family that I mentioned this morning. Heal that child. Lord, heal that child so that they can hug again. And Lord, those who have been devastated by this, heal them. Families that have been moved apart, heal them. People that are angry, heal them. People that need more love, heal them. People that are broken, heal them. God, we just need you. Jesus, we need you. Let us open our eyes to see it. It's in your precious and wonderful name we pray in these things, Jesus Christ.